Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Wednesday in Major League Baseball. First up, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Detroit Tigers. We're going to see Eduardo Rodriguez and Rich Hill on the mound, two lefties in this game. And the Detroit Tigers overall this season, not too bad numbers against left-handed pitchers, especially in the last three weeks or so. But the Pittsburgh Pirates, in the last two weeks, their numbers have been near the bottom of the league in, in most important hitting metrics, team OPS, and isolated power. And you're facing one of the best lefties in baseball here in Eduardo Rodriguez, whose last two games against the Mets and the Guardians uh, 15 combined innings of shutout baseball with 17 strikeouts and only three walks to go with it. Uh, both of those uh, games were shutout victories for the Tigers, 5-0 and 2-0. And in fact, you know, Rodriguez's last five starts for Detroit, the Tigers are 4-1 and one on the money line in those games. I like the Tigers in this game. That The price isn't too bad. I'm going to take Detroit on the money line. Next up, it's the Minnesota Twins taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Sonny Gray and Dustin May are your starters in this one. Two guys pitching very well to start 2023. Gray with a sub-2 ERA, May with a sub-3 ERA. However, I do have some regression concerns in both of their games. Sonny Gray, a 3.12 xFIP, which is almost two runs steeper than his current ERA. The fact is he hasn't given up a single home run yet this season, which you know is still very impressive, but very uh, unsustainable for the course of you know of a long season. He's already had 45 innings of work, and he's facing a Dodgers team. It's been one of the best laps in baseball against right-handed pitchers this season and in the last two weeks. And we saw them get to Pablo Lopez in the first game of this series. L.A. going into Tuesday is fourth in baseball in Team OPS against righties and third in isolated power in the last two weeks with a very low strikeout rate and a high walk rate to go with it. So I think that the Dodgers can get to Sonny Gray, but I also think the Twins can get to Dustin May, who's got an uh, XFIP above four. So certainly some room for regression in his game. You look at the Minnesota Twins, sixth in baseball in the last two weeks in isolated power against right-handed pitchers. Their team OPS numbers right around league average, but I think you know that power in the lineup match it with the walk percentage at 11.3%. They're getting on base via the walk. I think this is a tough spot for Dustin May as well. So you got two really good pitchers, so we're getting a good, uh, good number on the total. I think I'm going to take the over here. I think there's some value there. Next up, it's the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Colorado Rockies. We're going to see Graham Ashcraft and Austin Gomber on the mound in this one. This is going to be the first career start for Graham Ashcraft at Coors Field. And, you know, he hasn't really been in the best of form as of late. His last start was okay against the Miami Marlins, five and two-thirds innings. He gave up four total runs. Three of those were earned, but two home runs in that game is a little bit concerning. And considering the Marlins have been one of the weaker laps in baseball against right-handed pitchers, I just don't love this spot for Graham Ashcraft because, you know, before that game against Miami, he gave up eight earned runs in an inning and two-thirds against the White Sox of all teams in a 17-4 loss for the Reds. So, you know, it's we know it's never easy for pitchers making their first start at Coors Field. Austin Gomber's been there and done that. He's been pitching, you know, at Coors Field for a few years now. And although his ERA currently at Coors is not the best, we did see him put together a pretty solid start. It was a quality outing for him and the Rockies in the last game against the Phillies. Six and two-thirds innings, three earned runs, and six strikeouts with no walks to go with it. Now, the Rockies' bats didn't back him up in that game, but still, I think Gomber, if he can give the Rockies a quality start in this game, it should be enough for the Rockies to grab the W. When you look at the numbers in the last couple of weeks, the Reds have not really hit left-handed pitching too well. You look at their team OPS, they're ranked 28th in baseball. Their isolated power is dead last in the league, and their strikeout percentage, 31.6% leads baseball. Their walk percentage, 4.1%, second worst in baseball. So this looks like it could be a good spot for Austin Gomber to put together a back-to-back -to -back quality start to Coors Field, something we haven't seen from him in a while. Give me the Colorado Rockies on the money line at Coors. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Oakland Athletics. We're going to see Ryan Nelson and Luis Medina on the mound in this one. Not my favorite game because I just don't love the price. You know, I, I would lean towards Arizona on the money line. That's where I'm leaning right now. But I just don't love taking Ryan Nelson at this kind of price on the road. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's got an ERA at 6.2 this season. He's not really got a lot of strikeouts, only 26 Ks in 40 and two-thirds innings. Seven home runs allowed to go with it. 
But I still think, despite all that, he is the better option here compared to Medina, who's got an 8.18 ERA, giving up three home runs in his first 11 innings of work. His strikeout numbers are down. The walks are not really too much of a problem right now, but we know his control has been off. We saw it in the first game against Los Angeles. And then, if this is a close game late, Arizona has the much better bullpen, the much better lineup to go with it. So I got to take Arizona in a lean here, but like I said, just don't see a ton of value in a price like this. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the San Francisco Giants. Taiwan Walker and Sean Manaya are your projected starters for now, but there is no official lineout for this game, so we could see a pitching change. Now, right now, if this is the matchup, I'm leaning towards the San Francisco Giants on the money line. They've had better numbers against right-handed pitchers than the Phillies have had against lefties, especially as of late, where Philadelphia ranks dead last in baseball in Team OPS and their third highest in baseball in strikeout rate against those left-handed pitchers. The last time we saw Shamanaya have a pretty good matchup on paper was against the Milwaukee Brewers, a team that also struggles against lefties. And Manaya, you know, although he wasn't great in that game and he struggled a little bit early on, he was still able to give the Giants five decent innings, enough for them to grab the W in the end, 6-4. to four. I think we could see a similar spot here against Taiwan Walker, who's not really pitched too well this season. Although his last start wasn't too shabby against the Rockies, it was at Coors Field, where we know Walker's had actually a lot of success in his career at Coors Field, so it wasn't really that surprising to see him pitch well there. His strikeout numbers are still down. We saw him only have three Ks and six innings of work last start, seven base hits allowed. I'm going to take the San Francisco Giants and a lean here on the money line. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the San Diego Padres. No official starter for the Royals. We should see Hugh Darvish going for San Diego. Now, I think the Royals hoped that Daniel Lynch would be ready to go for the start on Wednesday, but he's going to make another rehab outing in the minor leagues Wednesday. Uh, so it could be a bullpen game for Kansas City. I just don't really like the spot for the Royals overall. We saw a similar spot uh, this weekend against the Brewers where, you know, the Milwaukee took care of business in that game. And you, Darvish, you know, although he sometimes can give up some sharp contact and some home runs we've seen as of late, I still think he's going to be the much better option on the mound in this game. He's missing bats. He's got 47 strikeouts and 42 and two-thirds innings of work. I think he does enough here to, to grab a San Diego win pretty convincingly. So give me the Padres on the run line at home. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Griffin Canning and Kyle Brandish on the mound in this one. You know, Kyle Bradish is just in much better form going into this start compared to Griffin Canning, where you know, Canning in his last eight and two-thirds innings has given up 11 base hits, 10 earned runs, and two home runs with four walks to go with it against St. Louis and Houston of all teams. The Astros have been one of the weaker laps in baseball against right-handed pitchers, so I don't really have a ton of faith in Canning going into Camden Yards against a pretty hot Orioles lineup. And, you know, Kyle Bradish, he's not may, may not be my favorite starter to back, but he had six strikeouts through six innings of work and a, a no earned run baseball against the Pirates in his last game, a 6-3 win for the Orioles. The Orioles have done pretty well, and Kyle Brandish starts this season. Uh, they're 3-2 and two in the money line in the last five, so I'll take uh, the Orioles here on the money line at a pretty good price at Camden Yards. Next up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the Miami Marlins. We're going to see Edward Cabrera and Mackenzie Gore on the mound in this one. Yeah, Edward Cabrera has really had a tough strength of schedule this season. You look at the teams that he's faced, teams that you know are either really solid against right-handed pitchers or do a great job at limiting strikeouts against righties, teams that have winning records. You look at the beginning of the year, he played the Mets twice. We know a team that works pitch counts, gets on base via the walk, and does not strike out much. And it wasn't a surprise to see the Mets earn 13 walks in the first six and two-thirds innings of the season for Cabrera. But it didn't get really any easier F facing the Phillies, the Giants, the Braves, the Cubs twice. We know it's never easy facing the same lineup twice in a week. And then the Arizona Diamondbacks, another team like the Mets that works pitch counts, gets on base. So now Cabrera is facing a Washington Nationals team that has done much better against lefties and right-handed pitchers this season. Uh, you know, they're, they're a team that's always going to limit strikeouts, but they're also a team that doesn't really get on base much via the walk. And in the last two weeks, the Nationals are 5.6 walk rate against right-handed pitchers. That's second lowest in baseball. That benefits a guy like Cabrera, who has some control issues at times. The Nationals are also 21st in the league in Team OPS against righties, and their power numbers are also near the bottom of the league. They're ranked 25th in baseball. So this looks like one of the better spots probably the easiest spot of the season for Cabrera on paper and the Marlins have hit lefties pretty well in 2023 doesn't really look to be a great spot for Mackenzie Gore the Marlins limit strikeouts they have pretty good power numbers against lefties makes sense because they have a lot of right-handed batters in their lineup this season so I'm going to take the Miami Marlins here on the money line even though Gore has that better ERA I think this matchup benefits Cabrera a lot more 
Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Garrett Cole and Chris Bassett are your starters in this one. There's no doubting that Chris Bassett is in better form in going into this start as he's pitched back-to-back shutout performances, seven innings against the Pirates and nine innings, a complete game shutout against the Braves. But I still think Garrett Cole is the better option here, and I like the Yankees in this matchup. We're getting a really good price with the Yankees in this spot because of Bassett's hot streak. But, you know, Chris Bassett overall still an ERA about at 3.49, where he only has 41 strikeouts and 49 innings of work. We know the control's been off at times this season, where he, at one point he was giving up at least three walks in three straight games and 22 walks on the season in those 49 innings. The Yankees have done a really good job against right-handed pitchers as of late. In the last two weeks, you look at the numbers, the Yankees are fourth in baseball in isolated power. Power, fifth in Team OPS. They have a 15.6% strikeout rate, which is second lowest in the league, and a 10% walk rate, which is also top 10 in baseball. So to me, this is not a great spot for Chris Bassett. Garrett Cole's been able to miss a lot of bats this year, 62 strikeouts in 56 and two-thirds innings. He's been a winning pitcher, 5-0 this year, with that 2.22 ERA. I like the Yankees in this ballgame. Give me the Yankees on the money line. Next up, we see the Seattle Mariners taking on the Boston Red Sox. We're going to see Marco Gonzalez and Brian Bayo on the mound in this one. You know, to me, Fenway Park is not the best place to pitch in for a guy like Marco Gonzalez, who has had issues with the long ball in his career. Not so much to start this season. Uh, only four home runs allowed in 36 and two-thirds innings. However, we're starting to see those home runs be a little bit of an issue in his most recent games. In his last four starts, Gonzalez has given up at least one home run in three of those four. So at Fenway Park against the Red Sox team, it's improving against lefties. I do think Gonzalez struggles quite a bit in this spot. I'd much rather take Bayo, who's in good form going into this game, had a quality start at Atlanta against the Braves, six innings, two earned runs, and a 5-2 to two Red Sox victory. The Red Sox have won each of the last four games that Bayo has pitched in. And the, the big thing I like Bayo, not only can he miss some bats and earn those strikeouts, but he also gets a lot of ground balls. His last start, 14-3 to ground ball to fly ball ratio against the Atlanta Braves, one of the bigger slugging teams in baseball that hit a lot of home runs. Bayo kept the ball on the ground there. I think he does that here as well. Give me the Boston Red Sox on the money line. In our next game, we see the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the New York Mets. Kodai Senga going for New York. No official starter for the Rays right now. Could be another bullpen game for Tampa Bay. I don't really trust Kodai Senga in this matchup against a very tough Rays lineup. You know, the Rays aren't leading the league in walk percentage in the last two weeks against righties, but they're still a very patient lineup. They don't really strike out much. They have really good power numbers. And Kodai Senga's control has just been a problem this season. We saw in his last game, it really wasn't the walks. It was just a bad first couple, a first inning against Cincinnati, giving up eight base hits, five earned runs, and a home run in the final line for that game. And, uh, you know, Senga at times has given up four-plus walks. I just think against a team like the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that will make you pay, you know, in that situation if they get runners in scoring position, this just doesn't seem to be the best spot for Senga, who's got really good strikeout stuff and I think will be a good starting pitcher for this Mets, you know, in this Mets rotation this season, but just not the best matchup. So give me the Tampa Bay Rays and a lean here. We'll see who Tampa Bay decides to go with on the mound. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Corbin Burns and Adam Wainwright are your starters. You know, it's tough to go against these St. Louis Cardinals with how well their offense has done as of late. But Corbin Burns, this, you know, to me, this is a pitching mismatch with how well Corbin Burns has pitched as of late. Six straight starts of two earned run ball or less. And uh, against the St. Louis Cardinals last season, Corbin Burns, 28 innings of work, 32 strikeouts, opponent's batting average of 152 and a 1.29 ERA. Pitched very well against St. Louis. Adam Wainwright has struggled so far in 2023. His first two starts giving up four earned runs apiece in each of those games against the Tigers and Red Sox. A lot of base hits in those games as well. And two home runs allowed in his last start against the Red Sox. Uh, I think I think Cor Corbin Burns is the much better option here. Milwaukee hits righties better than they hit lefties. I got to take the Milwaukee Brewers on the money line with a lean towards the over in this game as well. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Texas Rangers. We're going to see Spencer Strider and Nathan Avaldi on the mound in this one. You know, Nathan Avaldi is pitching really well so far this season, a 2.7 ERA, a 1.96 FIP because he's earning strikeouts, he's limiting home runs, and he's limiting walks. However, he currently has a 2.4% home run to fly ball percentage. To me, that's very unsustainable when you look at the career for Avaldi, a guy who last year had a 17.2% percentage, 20% uh, back in 2020, 22.9% back in 2019. Now, granted, he doesn't have to pitch at Fenway Park anymore when he was a member of the Red Sox. That's certainly going to help those home runs, you know, that go down quite a bit. Uh, but still, you know, facing an Atlanta Braves lineup, it's very, very powerful. We saw what they did in the first game of the series. A lot of home runs, a lot of runs. 
I just don't know if this is the best matchup for Evaldi. And with Spencer Strider on the other side, there's really no room for error for Evaldi. And Strider's been one of the best pitchers in baseball. A 2.5 ERA, uh, 1.9 on the road, 79 strikeouts and 46 and two-thirds innings. He's had back-to-back -back games with double-digit strikeouts and three of his last four games with double-digit strikeouts. I got to take the Braves here on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Houston Astros. Drew Smiley and J.P. France are your starters. I'm going to lean towards the team total over for the Houston Astros. Drew Smiley's been sharp this year, 3.05 ERA, but there are some regression concerns, a 4.48 XFIP this season. Facing an Astros team, it's hit lefties a lot better than they've hit righties. And with the Chicago Cubs bullpen also not being the best in the last couple of weeks, I do think the Astros have a good spot to put up another good offensive performance like they did in the first game of this series. Uh, J.P. France, you know, he's, he's only had two starts at the major league level. There's some, you know, uncertainties in his game. He's pitched so, you know, very well so far this year. But rather than messing with the Astros on the money line or run line, I'd rather just take their team total over. And the final game for Wednesday's card in Major League Baseball, it's the Chicago White Sox hosting the Cleveland Guardians. Mike Clevenger and Peyton Battenfield are your starters. You got Battenfield with a 4.45 ERA, but an even higher 5.36 expected ERA. Clevenger doesn't really miss a lot of bats himself, 4.79 ERA, even higher 5.64 XFIP. I do think both of these pitchers struggle in this game. Uh, the, the Guardians do a great job of limiting strikeouts already, so I think Clevenger, you know, I don't think he's going to miss a lot of bats in this game at all. And uh, we saw him give up another home run in his last start against the Royals. Makes it five straight starts with at least one home run allowed uh, for Clevenger. So I think that the Guardians will be able to do some damage against him and a pretty weak White Sox bullpen in the end. But Peyton Battenfield also, you know, his last start, six innings, five total runs, four of those were earned against the Tigers of all teams. He has not pitched very well. His team also really hasn't backed him up in the run support department. I don't think it's going to be a problem in this game, but the Guardians have lost a lot of his games this season, and their bullpen's also not been very sharp in the last couple of weeks where they're you know below average in Sierra in the last two weeks. So give me the over here in Cleveland, Chicago to end the night. And that's it. Those are the games for Wednesday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.